Hi painters, it's been a really long time since I did a video. Um, you know, this pandemic has changed the way a lot of people do a lot of things. And um, as far as my job goes, I kind of depend on the restaurants to be open and at full capacity so I can teach my paint parties there. And um, when COVID took over our world and everything changed, I wasn't able to do that anymore. And um, it was kind of a scary, sad thing for me. And to be honest, I just kind of like hid in a cave and said, all right, see what's gonna happen, go with the flow, you know? And that's what I've been doing. I've uh, been spending a lot of time with my family. Um, and the animals and different little projects and keeping myself busy um, but painting has kind of been on the back burner and I really miss it and then here lately I kind of had this feeling that things were gonna go back faster than they did <laughs> um, and now I'm not sure anything is ever gonna go back to normal which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think a lot of, I think we're learning a lot with, with all that's going on. And a lot of necessary changes are happening. So I'm trying to be more positive. Um, and I know this whole pandemic has forced people to step out of their comfort zone and adapt and do things a different way. And I've been scared to do that because um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I'm not confident in my technology and and like the video thing. I, I don't know how to edit a video and um, I just feel like a fish out of water. But um, I've decided that it's time to step out of my comfort zone and reach out again because it's really not fair. I've developed a lot of relationships with a lot of my painters and I miss you all and I feel like I owe it to you to give you a little bit of my art and I'm gonna do that even though it's scary so I'm painting on a smaller canvas today and also I'm gonna paint things I want to paint not I'm not gonna look for designs that will fill class I'm just gonna paint because really I don't feel like when I teach you a painting I'm making it so you can, I'm just gonna teach you technique you know like you can take it and make it your own because I think that's more important than painting something somebody else has already done so I'm painting on a smaller uh, smaller uh, canvas today which is actually a challenge for me because I'm so used to our 16 by 20 canvases but I figured this won't take as long and I don't want to make you watch for an hour and a half so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a river, um, not just a river, I'm going to paint the Rolling Fork River, which is the one that we frequently kayak on, and it's pretty a pretty important place to me, so that's what I'm painting for you guys. Um, so anytime you start with a landscape, um, you want to fill in a lot of your background space so you don't have to worry about that later so I'll be adding trees and stuff but I'm gonna start with my sky and I just got some white and some blue on my brush and um, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what colors I'm using because it really doesn't matter you have to you have to figure that out for yourself what because not everybody's gonna have the same colors and it doesn't matter there's a million colors in the sky but I'm just using a couple shades of blue and some white. White is really important. I want it to be a pretty blue Kentucky, Kentucky sky. Now you watched me go down like this a little bit, which you wouldn't typically do for a sky, but I feel like it's mixing my paint a little bit differently on my canvas when I do that, but I always follow it up with a horizontal brush stroke too. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit darker color in there. 
and then I'll drag it across and just kind of blend all that in until I'm happy and kind of do it diagonal. I'm just getting a real pretty sky on there. A lot of this is going to be covered up with trees anyway, so I just really want, and I actually like the way that that's looking, so I'm just going to go with it. This guy is doing crazy stuff. Just blend, 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 blend. So, I like the way that looks. That's a lot of trial and error and, work, and what works for you. A um, little bit lighter down in here. That's going to meet a lot of greenery. And then we'll get down to river. Now, I want to give you the gist of the way that the river's going. And I want, you know, you think water, and for some reason you think blue, but our Kentucky rivers are actually lots of shades of green and brown. Um, and the trick to the river is you want to start off kind of horizontal. And bend around so my river kind of goes like this in my picture and I've got a little guideline picture one that I took I'll show you so this is just a picture I took of the rolling fork so I'm gonna change it up just a little bit and add a little bit more color because it's a painting and I can do that but it's just the and I'm going to define that river a little bit more as well. So, um, yeah, this river's going to bend around. And I'm using blue, but I'm going to I'm going to definitely add my greens in there. But I'm just giving you the shape of the river. So, and this is where it's really important. Is this this little bend right here? This bend says that that river continues around a corner, and I don't see where it's going and then it opens up in front of me. It's all about perspective. So that gives, that whole perspective gives the angle of which the, the vantage point is from. So I would be kind of low on the river, like in a kayak, looking out flat, flat like that. And that's why I would see that going around there like that. There's gonna be a bank and some brush on the side and stuff that's gonna make more sense later, which I'll go ahead and make that make sense for you. So, I'm gonna mix a little white and brown and a little bit of yellow because our banks kind of take that color, the, the Kentucky clay. So I'm just gonna kind of fill that in just to give you the idea of where the land is. I'll play with that more later, but that's just to, to make this make a little bit more sense. Of course, there's gonna be a lot of green and a lot of plant life there maybe a little bit of gray because we have the stones pebbles on the on the banks sandbars a little bit of gray to tone that clay down but like I said there's gonna be a whole lot of greenery there this is just the bank to hold that river there And when you're painting stuff like this, don't worry about making a perfect line. You notice there's no perfect lines here. It's all just very loose brush strokes because that's gonna make it look more natural. Um, a plastic river would have a perfect straight line. That's not what we have. We have little rocks and stuff. So if you make that line real um, jagged and just random, that's gonna look more like what happens in, in nature. So now I told you I'm letting the, the sky dry a little bit. I'm gonna work on the water some more. So I told you that our water in Kentucky looks very green and browns and dark kind of because it's reflecting from the trees that see that um, big bodies of water will reflect from the sky because that's, you know, water works as like a mirror. So ocean would reflect the sky, but our Kentucky rivers are usually encased in a canopy of trees in the summertime, so that water s reflects those trees. 
So I definitely want to add some green in. And so instead of mixing, I want like a hunter green, like a dark green. Instead of mixing with black to get that hunter green, I'm gonna mix with my really vibrant blue. My um, phthalo blue is what I, what I call it, but it's actually primary blue from Americana. And it gives it some depth to the green. And the trick with water is in most cases, you want to keep a very horizontal brush pattern. So you keep, I'm gonna throw in just a little bit of yellow just to kind of muddy it up a little bit. And of course, I'm gonna add some light reflection later that's gonna make this look a lot more like water, so. But see how straight across I'm making it? Because really, the way the water moves, you see the light reflecting that way. So the water's actually flowing this way, but it's gonna make it look a lot more like water if I stay really horizontal with my brush, with my brush strokes. So I actually am gonna throw in some black um, because I, I want to do that before I add some uh, lighter tones because um, I want that to dry. So I'm going to add just a little bit of black to my mumbo jumbo mess of green over here. A little black just to add that depth. So this is around, oop, I need some more green. It's too black. I'm going to, actually I'm going to switch to a smaller brush too. So this part right here where the where that bend is is super dark because it's going around where I can't see the light reflecting. So I'm going to darken that up just a little bit around that bend. There's a lot of plant life there that's taking a lot of that light and coming around. So that's almost black where I can't see. And then I'm going to add some dark some dark spaces down here too that just add some depth into the water where maybe it gets a little bit deeper and you can't see the bottom. Now our Rolling Fork River is pretty shallow for the most part in the summertime when we're kayaking. Although I have seen it super, super deep. But just adding some dark depth spots here. Lots of color though, lots of different colors. And notice every brush stroke, I'm going straight. Another secret when you're working with water is the flatter your lines, the more peaceful the water is. So if I was to do every line just super, super flat, it would look very serene and very calm and peaceful water. In the case of a river, it's usually not like that. It's usually rushing a little bit. So I am giving just a little bit of a bend to it to create the illusion of like waves and moving water. So just a little bit. Now I do want this completely covered. So I'm just gonna fill in some spots with some blue and a dirty brush. So it's kind of coming out gray. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because when I come back and add my light, the whole canvas will have paint on it and I don't have to worry about covering those spots. I might just add a little bit of water to my brush and do a little bit of blending. That already wet paint. Filling in. If you just dip your brush, a dirty brush, into some water, you can get rid of those little white, white dots of canvas popping through. Okay, so I'm liking that. Um, of course, we need that light to make that look like water, but it's a good primer, a good base for it. And I'm gonna move back up to my sky up here. Now, 
I always show this is a super easy cheater way to do trees is if you mess up your brush just kind of cluster the bristles and make of that shape and I'm gonna start dipping into black first because trees and any kind of plant life should be done in a few layers and the idea is darkest layer first and then lighten up as you go. So um, our river has a ton of trees. I'm gonna just start here and just kind of start forming the shape. I don't have to go crazy and cover all because I'm, I'm doing those other layers. So, but I'm just kind of giving the indications of these trees popping out. And the worst thing you can do, well, not the worst thing, but pretty, pretty terrible thing to do would be make every tree the same. Because you do that and you're going to have like Lego village. You don't want that. You want the randomness. You want, like I was talking about earlier with those edges, no straight lines. You want maybe a random branch that shoots off like that. You want to create randomness in those trees. Let's see my picture again. So, and I want just some of these trees to totally interrupt that sky space there. And then of course, some of these trees are closer than the others, and this one's gonna go all the way up to the sky there. That one's that one's definitely going to be closer. Okay. So I just kind of got the shapes on there of what's what's happening, and I'm going to just add some more green to my little mixture here, and I'm going to start down here. Some weird brush that's filling up the sides there, kind of covering some of that bank there. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to really have a plan yet because I'm just forming those trees. Take some of that green up in there for another layer. A little bit more black because I still need some depth in some of these trees here. I learned this method a long time ago from one of my heroes, Bob Ross. I learned how to do happy trees. You start with that dark layer and then lighten it up and lighten it up as you go. So I'm liking that shape. I'm liking the way that's going. I'm really liking how this tree right here is reaching up that way where I had that weird diagonal sky thing that I did. That is an accident, but a happy little accident. Bob Ross again. But um, now I can add a little bit of yellow to my green mixture. And so my palette looks like happy little mess. See that? I'm doing a lot of dabbing and mixing of colors. And then notice that right there. You see how that makes it become a tree? It's just little reflections of light in different areas that define each little tree cluster. Now, instead of one big mess, I have one tree, two trees, three trees. And it creates that movement and that depth. Add a little bit more yellow and work on this side a little bit. So this is this one's way up there by the sky. It's getting a lot of sun, so we're gonna have a lot of yellow up there on that. Same here. This tree up here. I think this is where the vultures live. We have this one stretch of river that I call Condor Alley, which are not really condors, but that's where my imagination takes it. Condor Alley has like 200 buzzards that live out there. I love it. My husband, not so much. <laughs> but I think it's a magical place. They've been roosting out there for years. They have like a awesome colony built up. And a couple times while we were going down, we've seen where they've all taken off of the trees and it's pretty intimidating. I really like it. Lots of awesome things we see on the river. It's one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. 
We didn't get enough time on the river this year. Hopefully we'll get out a couple more times before it gets cold. So I'm really liking the way that those um, trees are looking and it was just a couple simple steps. You see how easy that is, just a dab, dab, dab. The big tree or the big tip I'm giving you here is the randomness. Notice this side is completely different from this side and our human brains, like adult human brains, tend to want to order things and you have to work really hard to not order those things in your head. Like strive for that randomness. We don't want it to mirror. We don't want, if this side looked exactly like this side, it would look really fakey and we don't want that. So um, I'm gonna leave it like that for right now. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna add just a little bit of white because I think that I need just a little bit more reflection, see that? Just a little bit more light reflection going on there just to add that extra depth. But every layer that I've done in color, I've gotten less and less. So that dark color, I, gave, I went all over the place and gave my shape. And then I threw in some more green and less of that, less of that just to kind of highlight. So some of that dark would still shine through. And then I went with the yellow just a little bit. And now with this white, just a tiny little bit. But each layer that you do makes it look more real. Just little pops of highlight. This is where the sun is peeking through and highlighting certain things. So I think that that's good. And I'm just going to take that leftover and start adding a little bit of reflection into my river. Look at that. Water. Because I got that light color on there. It's just adding the illusion of the, the re light reflecting off of my water. So that's looking really nice. Now I want to kind of follow that same um, dabbing technique for my gravel bar here. But I don't want it to look like leaves. So I'm just going to add a little bit of texture and wipe off my brush. And then I'm going to kind of drag it a little bit. in a horizontal just to give a little bit of texture but again that is farther away I don't really want to see each and every rock but I want it to give the illusion of some texture because this river does not have perfectly sandy bars it's more like we call them gravel bars but they're made of these pebbles so that's pretty nice for that um, I still feel like I need to close in there a little bit more and I need more control so I'm going to switch to a smaller brush again because the way our river goes actually in the picture this is all closed in but I don't really want to do that because I just like the openness. I like the idea that we don't know what's around that river bend but what is around that river bend is more trees because that tree that tree line just continues and continues. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of blurry off in the distant trees there. So I'm just using some of this muted color here and creating some more trees that looks like that pattern continues on back around that bend there. Closes it in a little bit and that's more like a Kentucky River. blurry little trees in the background. So I've got very little paint on my brush, but that just gives that idea that it continues. Okay, so we need to work on our water some more. I'm gonna dip in my white paint. Now, where the water meets the bank is where the water is the angriest because it's splashing up on those rocks and, and, and um, fighting with them a little bit. So on the edge is where I'm going to want a lot of water friction and that's where that light is. It's going to foam up. It's going to angrily hit some of that bank there and cause a little interruption in that water. So 
I'm going to have to create that around those edges there. Now, another popular thing in our Kentucky rivers is going to be, um, since they are kind of shallow when you're, when you're doing things like kayaking and stuff and the, and the river's down, you'll see um, tree, like old trees popping out of the water or um, rocks, like big rocks. So I'm going to add just a little hint of that. So I'm going to do like a, a rock right there, kind of interrupting. And so I just add the shape. Now I want that to be, um, I want that to be, let me switch to a smaller brush. So the idea of that is the bottom should be flat, but I want a little reflection. So I'm going to add just a little dark line under here that says this is where it meets the water, which is horizontal and flat, just like water lays flat. So I want the bottom to be like that, a little line to, to indicate that that is flat on there, but then I have a little bit of reflection of that rock. And then like everything else, I'm going to add some highlight. So. Highlight the top where the sun would hit, and as above, so below in the reflection. So there's just a little, now, a little indication of rock. A little bit more white on the top there. Let's really give that a reflection. Now, around that rock, is going to be the same thing that we've been been talking about that angry water so i'm going to take my brush with a little bit of white and i'm just gonna create some angry water around that that rock there it shows it's hitting it now maybe over here we could use a tree like an old fallen tree that the river is taking still has some branches to it, but not a whole lot, so, and a lot of it's underwater, something like that. Okay, well this is probably really hard for you guys to see because it's little tiny details. But these little tiny details, and each one that you add, these little tiny details kind of make the painting. So just think the tops of things are lighter, the bottoms are darker. So I add a shadow below, and I add white on the top where the sun would reflect. And I've got this little, and again, that tree would interrupt the flow of my water and create that friction in the water, which is light. So I'm going to have the water rushing around those branches and splashing up and have some light there. So that's just a little bit of detail in the water. Now, I'm still not completely happy with my water. I still think that I need some white reflection. So I'm lighten it up a little bit because this is a little bit open and the sun would be shining through on it. So even though I have those, I'm gonna I'm gonna add just some more some more um, light reflections on my water. Not a whole lot. And then I'm going to get the paint off of my brush and just kind of drag it over. Just kind of work that in. Okay, that's looking good. But again, you don't want to create a pattern. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern going on there. You don't want that. 
would be random. favorite thing, or one of my favorite things about being on the river is the dragonflies. And uh, from the first time my husband took me kayaking on the Rolling Fork, I immediately was drawn to these dragonflies. They're everywhere. They're just all over the place and they land on you and I have my feet up on my kayak and they land on my toes. The battery's low. Um, but they land on my toes and I usually take a picture of them and I have tons of pictures of the dragonflies. So I wanna add a dragonfly to this picture. Now, that's gonna be a little tricky because I have the whole picture and it's gonna kinda hurt my heart a little bit to, to throw that in there because I kinda want it big. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think it'll be really cool but I might mess the whole painting up. And that's kind of like the risk you take. But I think it'll add a whole lot. Oh, and also, before I married my husband, he bought me this dragonfly necklace for my birthday in 2017. And I have wore it every day since. And it's a little tarnished and I have to polish it up. And But I love it. So big fan of dragonflies and there's a reason I chose to do this it was like the end of the end of summer and the end of my kayaking day is coming and that's always kind of a sad time for me but also the dragonfly is symbolic of change and transformation and adaptability and power and I think all of that is really fitting right now in the world and dragonfly for today so uh, I want to do this differently because I imagine it swooping in this way but you guys are seeing it differently so I have two interruptions here that I don't want to cover I've got that tree and that rock I kind of worked hard on that so I don't want to cover that so I think my dragonfly is gonna come in swooping in this way and I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a bend like that. Now its wings are going to cover some of that. I got to get I got to get in a better position here to conquer this. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going with a uh, light color right now and then I'm going to like spruce it up a little bit. I'm getting definitely getting into it, but I want to create that shape. So they have a big head up here, kind of a body and then the long tail with a slightly bulbous end. Okay, so I've kind of got the shape. I don't know if you can see that, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of white, which I might cover up, but I just want you to be able to see it, and I know that the white is going to help. So I'm going to highlight the top and then run it down the back. So here's the bulbous end. It's super, super narrow. Okay, so can you see that shape right there? I'm gonna hit the camera that's behind me. Okay, so then my next step is to add the wings, and I'm gonna look at a picture I took just to help me with that a little bit because the wings, again, like I was talking about earlier, you don't want Re repetition and perfect you want okay I deleted it never mind I'm gonna go by memory okay so you don't want it to look exactly the same so I'm gonna take this seems like a good size and this one I see I'm just given the shape they have two wings on either side just given the shape but I don't want I don't want to have the same exact shape I just want 
you would see just a little bit differently. And it's gonna be a little bit shorter because my dragonfly is on, it's kind of spinning in on the side. So these, these wings would be a little shorter than these wings because of that perspective. Okay? All right, so my favorite dragonflies on the rolling fork are like the teal blue, like the turquoise vibrant. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that color and I'm using the phthalo blue. And the phthalo blue, I love that color. Actually, I'm gonna clean my brush because I don't think it's bright enough. Phthalo blue, light. I don't want anything to muddy that up because they're super vibrant. And I'm gonna fill that in and I want to keep it bright because it, it it really shouldn't blend in too much with the surroundings just a little bit because it's kind of the star of the show now it's not about the river anymore it's about this guy living there right now they're out like crazy too they're all breeding season. Sometimes they have little breaks in their color. This guy has a pretty turquoise blue color. And I'm gonna give them some yellow up here around the eye area because they have these super complex eye systems. And again, I'm going to add some white just to brighten up that top so you can see it a little bit better from the background. Okay. I like the way that that's looking. Probably add a little bit more white, but I'm going to work on the wings for just a second. Switch to a, I think this brush, this is a smaller, like angled brush. I think that'll work nicely for the wings. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of yellow and kind of accent the top of the wing because the top of the wing kind of holds the strength of that wing there. So, I'm going to just make that a little bit more prominent and then. I'm going to wipe off some excess paint and I'm going to start dragging a little bit down from it to start filling that in and kind of giving a, um, it's transparent, but I want it to, it's between transparent and opaque. So it, it is going to blur the background behind it. It's not completely transparent. It has just a little too much, a little cloudiness to it. And that's what I'm going to kind of do. So I'm just dragging from the top and filling that in. So you can't completely see what's behind it. You want very little paint. Sometimes I get a little heavy handed with it and I don't wanna do that. And I'm gonna go up from the top the or the bottom the same way. Just kind of create a cloudiness for those wings. Now, I don't like this one down here because I can't see where the tip is. So I'm going to give it some white shining on that tip there. And the light would reflect in different areas too, so it does not have to be perfect. Just like everything else, random. Not the same. There's nothing wrong with finger painted. Okay, so that creates the illusion of some wings. It's a little foggy. All right, I like it. A little.
little bit more white to highlight his back. Just tiny little bit. Highlight his back. Highlight a couple things on his head. Where his back and his tail. I'm going to do just a little dashed line here because that is showing that there's those little sections. Just little light reflections and then a little light on that bulbous end. And then I have a dragonfly. And I'm going to just blur out a little bit more of this with some um, so it's got like, almost like veins that run through the wings. And I'm just giving the indication of some of those lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. I keep saying that, but it really doesn't. Just like my video, which I hope you enjoy. And I'm glad to be back. And to my normal painters, I'm very sorry that I have abandoned you for so long and I promise to do more of these videos for you so you can follow along and paint at home and that is my rolling fork picture with my dragonfly and sign the bottom and it'll be finished so thank you for watching and take care